Freak the Mighty, 10, Rats or Worse. One thing that happened over the summer, I grew even more. Grim takes a look at me one day and he goes, All that walking you do, it must be stretching out your legs. And carrying poor Kevin around, that seems to be putting real muscle on you. He's not that heavy. And anyhow, it's not fair everybody always says poor Kevin, just because he didn't grow. Grim gives me this long, sorrowful look, and then he clears his throat and says, You're quite right. He is a rather remarkable boy. He's memorized almost the whole dictionary. You can ask him anything and he knows what it means. You don't say, Grimm says. And he has a smug look like maybe Freak is lying and a total goon like me would never get it. And I want to tell him he's wrong about Freak and the dictionary, but instead I just shut my face and go down under. Grimm, he's okay sometimes, like when Tony D chased us into the pond. But most of the time, he thinks he knows everything, which he doesn't. And if you don't believe me, look under Grimm in the dictionary. It sure doesn't say a smart grown-up. No way. So I'm hanging out down under, listening to some of my trash tapes on the fake Walkman I got last Christmas, when Freak pops up on the side of my bed. Because of the headphones and the volume being pumped up to mega decibel, I never hear him come in. He's just suddenly there, like, whoa. And I'll bet I jumped about a foot. Freak rolls his eyes and goes, ah, music, how it calms the savage beast. How'd you get in here? Would you believe teleportation? No? Then I came down through the bulkhead door like always. And like always, I have a quest in mind. Right away I go, my feet hurt. We don't have to leave the neighborhood. Cool. What kind of quest is this? Freak grins. A treasure hunt. Except we don't really have to hunt because I already know where the treasure is. Where? Underground, he says. Specifically in the sewer. Yeah, right, I say. And sit back down on the bed. Freak is looking at me sideways. And I can tell he's not telling me everything. Which, is almost, which he almost never does. Not all at once. Truth, he said, the treasure is hidden in a storm drain. This has been confirmed by visual observation. Treasure in a storm drain? You mean like gold and diamonds and stuff? Possibly, he says, acting mysterious. Anything is possible. The deal is, we have to wait until night so no one can see us messing with the storm drain. Not just night, Freak says. We need to do it at exactly three in the morning. Optimum darkness occurs at 0300 hours, he says, looking at the new watch his mom gave him, the kind that tells you what time it is in Tokyo, just in case you're wondering. We must dress in black and cover our faces with soot. For the next couple of hours, we try to find soot, but it turns out you need a fireplace for soot, or at least a chimney. So Freak finally decides that my idea about using regular dirt will have to do. I've got black dungarees, I say, but no black shirts. Can I just wear a dirty shirt? Freak makes a face and says, What a disgusting idea. Don't worry about the shirt. I'll get you one. Can you manage black socks? You ever notice how long it takes for things to happen when you know they're supposed to happen? My fake Walkman has a built-in alarm, and I set it for 2 in the morning and wear the headphones to bed. But before you can wake up, you have to fall asleep. And I never do fall asleep because I keep waiting for the alarm to go off. Which is, I know, typical butthead behavior. I'm lying awake in the dark on a hot summer night and I'm thinking, Treasure in the sewer? What kind of quest is this, huh? Is Free completely making this up or what? Meanwhile, there's this cricket making this creaky creaky cricket noise. That's normally is okay, except when you're trying to fall asleep. Then it's not okay. And you want a big can of Raid, send it to Disney World or Insect Heaven or wherever it is that dead crickets go. Question. How come Freak knows about this stuff in the storm drain? Question. How come we have to put dirt on our faces? Question. How come three in the morning? Question. How long do crickets live? 
Finally, I give up on the first three and work on the cricket problem. But the little critter is pretty clever. It stops cricketing whenever I get too close, and I never do find it and squash it with my shoe, which I swear I'm ready to do, even if crickets are supposed to be harmless. And then after almost forever, it gets to be 2.30, and I figure, that's close enough. I go up and wait under Freak's window like I promised. There's no moon. The sky is dark and empty. And the backyards are so lonesome, it feels creepy and exciting. The truth is, I've never been out alone at this time of night. I only fall down a couple of times, which isn't bad considering how hard it is to see. When I get to Freak's bedroom window, he's waiting for me. You sound like a car wreck, he says. Here, you better put on this shirt so you don't glow in the dark. Out of the window, he hands me this silly, fe silly feeling shirt. Hey, wait a minute. This is your mom's blouse. It's black, he says. That's what counts. The camouflage factor. Forget it, I say, and give him back the fair Gwen's blouse. Freak size. Okay, he says. Roll around on the ground and darken yourself. That's easy and better than wearing some dumb blouse. What about you? I ask when I'm covered with dirt. Enough that I want to sneeze. Freak goes, beware the force, earthling. And he stands up in the window, and I can see he's got a Darth Vader costume on, except he's not wearing the mask part. He opens the window all the way, and I shift him out and put him on the, my shoulders. He goes, pledge to me your felty. And I say, huh? And he says, never mind. There's no time to look up felt felty. Just promise you'll do what I say. I promise. Go to the end of the block, he orders. Attempt to conceal us in the shadows. That's easy because the street is one big shadow. It's so dark I can hardly see my feet. Or maybe I got some dirt in my eyes. But the point is no one sees us because there's no one to see us. You'd never know anybody lived here, let alone a whole block full of people. It's like we're on an empty planet or something. Was the real Darth Vader as tall as this? Freak asks from where he's riding high up on my shoulders. I thought it was just a movie. You know what I mean. What's that? That is a cat that runs out from under my feet. So out of nowhere, sudden that my heart goes wham. Was it a black cat? Freak wants to know. Too dark to tell, I say. Are we almost there? Finally, I figure out it's hard to see because the Darth Vader cape is hanging in my eyes. But by then, we're at the end of the block and the storm drain is right there by the curb. See if you can pull it open, Freak says. He's standing with his arms folded and the expression on his face, well, he really does look like a pint-sized Darth Vader. I hook my hands in the storm drain gate. Great. And give it a heave, but nothing happens. I can't budge it. Try again, he says with his arms folded, like he's a lord of the universe. I try again, and it's like the grate is super glued or something. No way can I pull it up. Freak is tugging at my leg, and he goes, Option two is now in effect. He reaches inside his little cape. Out comes a flashlight, one of those small kinds that looks sort of like a cigarette lighter and also a spool of kite string. I devised a special retrieval device, Freak says. Looks like a bent paper clip on a string, I say, and Freak tells me to shut up and follow orders. You hold the string, he says, and then he gets down on his knees and shines the little flashlight through the grate. Can you see it? He asks. Can you? I look, but it's hard to see anything. And it smells like something died in the storm drain, which, come to think of it, it probably did. Rats or worse. Down there, Freak says. The beam is hitting it right now. That? That's just a piece of junk. Wrong, Freak says, real fierce. It looks like a piece of junk. It may very well contain fabulous wealth. Drop the line down and see if you can hook it. I'm thinking, boy, what a butthead rolling in the dirt for this little Darth Vader so he can play pretend games in the middle of the night. But I do what he asks. I drop the hook down, and much to my surprise, it actually hooks onto something. 
and when I pull up on the kite string, I can see what it is. A purse, I say. Looks pretty grotty old. Looks like a grotty old purse. Careful, Freak says. Pull it up to the grate so I can grab the strap. I bring it up an inch at a time, and Darth, excuse me, Freak, manages to get his small hand down through the grate and grab hold of the soggy old purse, and then he almost drops it. I yank up on the kite string, and we both manage to squeeze the slimy purse up through the bars. Phew! Mission accomplished, Freak says. The old purse is torn and wet, and I don't want to touch it unless I have gloves on. Gross, I say. Somebody must have flushed this down the toilet. No way, Freak says. I saw one of Tony D's punks stuff it down there yesterday morning. Yeah? They must have stole it. No doubt, Freak says, and he opens the clasp and points his little light inside the purse. By now, I know there isn't going to be any treasure, but still, this is pretty cool, recovering stuff that Blade's gang ripped off from some little lady or whatever. A wallet, Freak says, and he flips open the cheap-looking wallet, the kind that's made to hold credit cards. There's no money inside, but there's a plastic ID card, and on the plastic card is a lady's name. Loretta Lee, Freak says. I'll bet you anything she's a damsel in distress. Which, as it turns out, is almost true. The real deal is that she's a damsel who causes distress. Which we find out the very next day. <laughs>